If you have access to the article, A Feast for Decomposers, and would like to read it by yourself, go ahead and do so. Remember to actively read the article, underlining pieces of evidence, circling new ideas, and highlighting our science words. If you would prefer to listen to me read it out loud, that's totally okay too. A Feast for Decomposers. Introduction. Imagine you're invited to a feast. When you get there, your host serves you droppings, which is poop, these are droppings, dry brown leaves, bare bones, feathers, and a fallen tree. But you can't eat that. This is a feast for decomposers, not for humans. Decomposers are fungi, bacteria, worms, and other small organisms that specialize in breaking down dead matter. So there's their feast. Fallen trees, poop. Decomposers can break down things that nothing else can. Bones, droppings, and other dead matter may not seem like food, but they contain materials that decomposers can use for energy and growth. For example, Dead matter contains energy storage molecules that many decomposers use for cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a process that many organisms, including humans, use to release energy in order to survive. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this section. Um, decomposers can break things down that nothing else can. So I'm going to add a note that the decomposers get their energy storage molecules from things like dead matter and, and poop that still contain energy storage molecules. So that might be cons why they're considered still biotic matter. I see here it says that they use, many decomposers use energy storage molecules for cellular respiration. I'm going to highlight this in red because this is a new word for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click here at a note. What is cellular respiration? We've heard that um, the organisms use energy storage molecules for things like reproduction, but here it's talking about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a process that many organisms, including humans, used to release energy in order to survive. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight this here. So it sounds like the cellular respiration process is the thing that releases the energy from the ESM. Okay, interesting. During cellular respiration, oxygen and energy storage molecules combine releasing and giving off carbon dioxide. Okay, that was our big question. So I'm going to go ahead and underline this and add a note. Cellular respiration is the way that organisms give off CO2. Okay, so that's how it's getting into the atmosphere. Energy storage molecules contain carbon, an important component of living things. Through cellular respiration, decomposers are able to release carbon found in dead matter, making it available to the ecosystem. Without decomposers, this carbon would stay trapped in the dead matter. Decomposers don't just release carbon from dead matter. They also make other materials available to an ecosystem, such as nitrogen. Nitrogen is a critical nutrient for plant growth. Decomposers may be small, but they play an important role in any ecosystem. To learn more about decomposers, read one or more of the chapters that follow. So we're not gonna read a chapter right now, but if you want to go ahead um, and do that to learn a little bit more about these really cool uh, types of organisms that have this special ability to be able to break things down. But I do want to go ahead and zoom in on this process that it introduced us to here I'm seeing that the carbon dioxide is getting released. So we can say that decomposers are definitely also releasing that carbon dioxide. And this seems to be the way that it's happening in this process. Um, 
called cellular respiration. Now, I'd be interested to look and see if the producers and the consumers that we saw releasing carbon dioxide also are doing these things. And I think we'll probably have to go ahead and get in the digital model for that. But again, we can see here um, that that is what is happening in these decomposers. When they are using those energy storage molecules and doing this process to do that, one of the things that occurs is carbon dioxide is released. So a decomposer is an organism that gets energy storage molecules, such as glucose, by breaking down dead matter. Now, one type of decomposer is uh, fungi or mushrooms, which is why I wore my mushroom population shirt today for our lesson. Um, but they're such amazing populations of organisms. They are able to, to get energy from something that most organisms cannot even eat without getting sick. So that's really cool, um, and, and they must be very interesting to study. So if we're returning to our table that we did at the start of this lesson, we now have collected a little bit of evidence uh, that can help us really make some informed decisions. So I want you to take a look back at your table and see if you still agree with the placements of your different populations of organisms. What gives off carbon dioxide and what does not give off carbon dioxide? So hopefully you have organized all of our producers, decomposers, and consumers into the category of giving off carbon dioxide. From our investigation um, and the video, we saw consumers and producers are giving off carbon dioxide. In our article, we read that decomposers also uh, give off this carbon dioxide, and even read that it's called this process of cellular respiration and how it does this. Now, the fallen leaves, the dead matter, um, you could have really put on either side at this moment because we still don't really have any evidence about whether dead matter gives off carbon dioxide. And so this is something that we are going to have to look more into by using the digital model in our next lesson. Now, in the digital model, we also are going to be looking to see whether other organisms are doing this process of cellular respiration that we read about in the article. And we're really gonna dive deep to understand what exactly is happening during this process to produce that carbon dioxide. See you next time.